Good morning and welcome back to Coffee Break. Welcome to our next installment of Social Media 101. Today we're going to be talking about Twitter. Um, but before we get into that, we wanted to say thank you to everyone who commented on our Facebook edition. You guys raised a lot of really great points. Mm -hmm. And um, we actually wanted to address a question that a few viewers had, which is, does social media actually sell books? Short answer, no. You know, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> let's just leave it at the short answer. Um, no, because, well, marketing and sales is are totally different things. Mm -hmm. Um, marketing doesn't directly sell the books, but you can't sell your book if people don't know it exists, which is right. why marketing is helpful. And social media is a really effective way of marketing In cheap your book. Way. Yes, it's inexpensive, um, but it's an effective way because you can directly connect with your fans. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like, oh, I saw an advertisement of your book. They're actually hearing directly from you, you're promoting the book. Um, and you're supplementing the marketing that your publisher will be doing for the book. This is just additional marketing, icing on the cake. So it yeah. really is helpful. Let's talk about Twitter. So Twitter is kind of confusing to a lot of people, especially if they're only coming from Facebook, having only used Facebook and, and trying to look at Twitter as if it's another version of Facebook. Twitter can seem oversimplified and a little redundant, but here's one of the reasons why you need to be on Twitter, even if you're already on Facebook. There was a Forbes study in 2010 that showed that Twitter users are significantly more likely to buy the products of brands they follow and to recommend it to their friends. So that's good news for you, my friend. Yeah, yeah. And Twitter users are also just more dedicated, you know, and studies have also shown that um, younger generations prefer Twitter to Facebook. So Facebook isn't cool anymore. I Apparently. Mean, if you're a children's and YA author, Twitter provides a better way to connect directly with your fans because yes. that's more of the age bracket. Yep. One of the main differences between Twitter and Facebook is how they deal with the timing of your post. Right. So with Facebook, your posts could have a longer life, but not necessarily everyone will see it. If you don't have enough likes and comments, it might not show up on all of your fans' news feeds. Whereas Twitter posts everything you post instantaneously, and it will show up on everyone's feed who's following you. And people who aren't following you can still see it with hashtags, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, but you know, it's it's not going to be brought up. It's going to move down as other things replace it and become more recent. So um, Twitter is a lot like a news ticker. You know, with the headlines and everything, just mm -hmm. keep replacing each other. Our first uh, tip actually comes from one of our viewers, Ronald Ventander. So thank you for reminding me about this. That's but a cool name. Yeah, I hope that I pronounced it right. <laughs> Sorry, Ronald, if we got it wrong. <laughs> but Ronald suggested. Um, joining Hootsuite, which is a third-party platform that can sync all of your social media together. So if you want to be on Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus and everything else, but don't have time to like check and post every single one of them, you can just log in once to Hootsuite and you can see them all on one screen. You can just type a post once and it will share it to all of your platforms. It's also a great way to track mentions and keywords that you want to keep track of. So it's just all nice in one space. So recommend joining Hootsuite or there are other um, similar platforms as well. Yeah, it sounds like a great time saver. Yes, definitely for all those busy authors because we know you're busy. <laughs> Something that makes Twitter unique is that each post has to be limited to 140 characters. Yep. Yeah. So be short and snappy. Um, we actually recommend sticking to 120 characters because that gives a little bit extra space for your fans to retweet and say a little something of their own. Right. So when Shakespeare said brevity is the soul of wit, he was talking about Twitter. Yes. It's true. I mean, totally true because everyone says Shakespeare was ahead of his time. 400 years ahead of his time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because of the character limit on Twitter, there's a bit of a casual culture within the Twitterverse. So there's some accepted shorthand um, that will all be in the glossary as well that we'll link to. Um, and you kind of have to decide how casual you want to be. What, what fits your personality? There are some things that we use on our professional accounts um, that are shorthand that is accepted and they're like shorter words, but we've decided not to take the leap into using numerals for words. I Just, that. I mean, personally, we find that annoying. It doesn't seem quite as professional. 
So you kind of figure out where your line is. If you're okay using numerals, go ahead. Yeah, me personally, I hate IMO. I mean, I think in my opinion is kind of redundant language <laughs> anyway, because like who else's opinion would I be sharing? Okay, but what about IMHO to like say that you're humbly putting forth your opinion? I don't think humble people draw attention to the <laughs> fact that they're humble. Um, I think that's redundant hashtag too. Hashtag humble brag. <laughs> Oh, hashtags. Speaking of hashtags. Hashtags. <laughs> hashtags are really useful for getting your tweets noticed by people who don't necessarily follow you, but they may be following topics that you're interested in, like kid lit or YA novels or just other fun things. You can look at the trending topics and speak in on one of those. Yeah, but um, use them with caution because yes. the road to hell is paved with overused hashtags. Yes. I would say no more than two hashtags per tweet, and you certainly don't need to use them in every tweet. Hashtag that's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> they are very helpful, but um, like everything, you need a nice, a nice balance. So we know that Twitter can be kind of confusing if you're just getting started, but the best way to learn it is just to dive right in. So we encourage you to join and start following people and reading tweets and just get a feel for the culture of the Twitterverse. Yeah. And if you have any questions about Twitter that we didn't cover in this video or that Twitter doesn't cover online, um, leave a comment and we'll do our best to answer your questions. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week. Coffee break.